continue on with our post-race media availabilities for tonight's Food City 300. We are now joined by our race winner, Kyle Bush, and his crew chief, Chris Gale. Kyle, you now have a track record eight NASCAR Xfinity Series wins here at Bristol. This is also your 150th NASCAR National Series win. How does it feel to be back in victory lane here? <laughs> Uh, pretty good. You know, this is certainly, uh, you know, one of those places that we definitely always circle on the calendar to try to come to and, and race for victories. And tonight was one of those nights, you know, it just uh, you, you're never really sure how it's going to play out or how it's going to work out. But uh, you stay in the game till the end. And um, somehow, sometimes it's your night. And uh, tonight we can certainly uh, take that with us and, and know that it was our night. You know, just uh, the 60, obviously, they were trying. And I give them full credit for, uh, for, for trying the effort there and trying to go the whole way on fuel like that. Uh, there at the end, running that many laps. And they're fast. You know, they, they certainly had really good speed on those old tires. I mean, there were some, sometimes I probably could have made some moves on them, um, but I just didn't quite get a good enough run off the corner to, uh, to make anything that was going to work. Um, you know, and then uh, it seemed like he kind of started to get away from me a little bit there when I got bottled up in some traffic. And then there at the end, I wasn't sure if we were going to have the opportunity to, uh, to get back to him or not with, um, not, I didn't see very many lap cars when that caution came out with four to go um, that were coming up next. So, all in all, just uh, a great night. You know, Chris and the guys made some really good calls on the car for me and uh, made some adjustments to help me out for for being too loose in the long run, and uh, that really worked for me. So, Monster Energy Camry and Victory Lane always looks good here in Bristol. Chris, tell us a little bit about the late race strategy and your view from the pit box. Really, from a strategy standpoint, there wasn't a whole lot there. I knew, you know, they limit you to three sets of tires, so we kind of knew we were coming when that caution came on the last stop. I think you, you see the 60 was the only person who tried that um, and obviously almost made it work. Um, but really, I mean, our, our car was off most of the night, you know. I mean, we were loose to start and, and looser than we expected to be, and we had to do a lot of adjustments on it tonight with only three pit stops. I mean, we'd probably been better off to do less practice because I don't know if what we really worked on in practice is what we needed for racing tonight. Um, but, you know, he hung in there. We knew we were going to have a long run at the very end, so we kind of wanted to get ahead of the balance problems we were fighting. And we might have gone a little too much, but he also did a good job saving tires, and it worked out well. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please state your name and affiliation. Starting back with Mike. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Kyle, um, Butcher was kind of slowly pulling away from you there your crew was keeping you abreast of the fact that he was saving. Was there a part of a thought in your mind to let him go ahead and burn his stuff up knowing you'd probably get a late race caution? Or was he just that much that he was able to pull away from you that whole time? Um, early in the run, when we first came and got tires and those guys stayed out and he stretched a straightaway on me, I was saving tires. You know, I knew, well, we thought that no matter what, they were going to have to come down. And so that was ultimately just going to hand me the lead. So we were just saving our stuff. I was just racing the guys behind me at that point, you know, just looking at Denny and looking at uh, Larson and seeing what I needed to do in order to judge my gap off of those guys. I just let the 60 go, you know, but um, once we got a couple more of those cautions and came down to the last, uh, I think we had a restart with about 35 to go or something. That's when I knew it was go time. You know, I was going to have to pressure him and I, I was on him the whole run. I felt like, you know, there was a, an opportunity that he kind of got away from me a little bit, maybe a car length and a half or two um, with about six to go uh, through some lap cars, but then uh, I, I didn't know if we were going to be able to run them back down or not, but there was a caution with four to go, so that, that became irrelevant. But um, he ran a, a great race. I mean, he was fast and uh, did a really good job. I, I'm still shocked how fast he was on those old tires, and I, I could see sometimes when I can get close enough to him and I could push him through the corner or pressure him enough through the corner, he can make mistakes, and I was just hoping that one of those was going to be big enough that I was going to have a run on him and I could get by him. But uh, it never transpired uh, until that restart where he ran out. Kyle Rick Dollar with NetRadioDogs.com. A uh, lot of boos and a lot of cheers out there, but I'll quote uh, Dale Earnhardt. If you don't hear anything, you're in trouble. And you, my friend, are not in trouble. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for tomorrow? Uh, we've got a pretty cool intro deal coming for tomorrow. I've got a buddy of mine who's, uh, who's a DJ who made a little mix for me. So... Uh, be, be, be tuned in. Any additional questions? We'll go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Kyle, it seemed like that the bottom lane was just, it, that, that's always been a tough lane here, or at least lately, with, with the restarts. And I'm wondering, 
will that same thing be as, as, as significant tomorrow night, especially with the horsepower reduction, or does that help because it's harder or easier to spin the tires? What, what Are we going to see the same things what we saw? Because for as fast as you were in the tires, you couldn't get by him tonight. Yeah. Though, when you're on the side. Is that the same thing going to happen tomorrow night? <clears throat> yeah, my, my restarts were horrible tonight. Um, we got to work on gearing really bad. Um, you know, first gear was just way too tall. Second gear was way too low. And when I'd go to the gas so fast, uh, in second, you know, it would just stumble, it'd fall on its face. And then by that time, I'd get run over, you know. So um, certainly uh, the guys behind me were patient tonight. I appreciate that. Um, they, they probably helped me more than they hurt me tonight. But uh, it was a bit frustrating with all those restarts. I knew if I could just get one good one and be enough alongside of, of Busher getting into turn one, that I'd have an opportunity to be able to cut underneath them and, and get enough ahead of them down the back stretch, but I just could never get a good restart. So, um, you know, it wasn't meant to be there tonight. So we'll we'll go back to the drawing board on that and try to fix uh, fix our issues from tonight and uh, tomorrow. I, I don't I don't think it'll be that bad. I think our stuff's geared a little bit better. Um, the bottom lane is just always at a disadvantage. I don't know. I think it's because the bottom lane you're kind of coming up out of a hole. I mean, it's a slight hole. But you're coming up out of a hole where the, where the top lane, you're, you're either going downhill or you're staying, you know, level plane. So um, you don't lose that momentum of, of having to go uphill, essentially. So um, that's just what restarts at Dover kind of the same way. You know, you got to come up out of that hole. Final questions? Kyle and Chris, thanks for joining us and congratulations. Right. Thank you.